This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 20th of April, 2020, and I am 2J. I'm Tom. And I am DM. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. Mm -hmm. On the Daily Nation, mm -hmm. reckless youth fuel spread of COVID-19. Yeah. The Standard, The Fixers. <laughs> and finally, The Star, stories of brave medics keep COVID-19 at bay. Mm. Right. Let's start with The Standard, which has been on a political roll for, I think, the past week. Yes. Yeah. And the standard is telling us that uh, Atwoli, mm -hmm. Francis Atwoli, and De David Murathi yeah. have been very vocal <laughs> and consistent in their messaging. This yeah. is who they are calling the fixers. Yeah. Atwoli has told us consistently that the president is too young to retire, and he's going to continue providing leadership post the 2022 election, mm -hmm. but he hasn't told us in which iteration. Murade, on the other hand, has consistently, consistently told us that the deputy president will not be president and he has given us his reasons. Mm -hmm. yes. The standard is also saying mm. that these two gentlemen appear to be speaking on behalf of higher political powers. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is wrong well, with that? I, exa that was my <laughs> first question. Why are we surprised? Absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, William Bruto has his people as well. Yeah. So Trump has Kellyanne Conway. I mean, this is well, it, these are established positions. Yeah. Precisely. Every uh, political machinery has its aggregators of mm -hmm. voice. Yeah. And uh, these two are that for Jubilee, I suppose. Yeah. And then um, they're also saying, well, they're calling them the fixers. Mm. And to this, we ask fixers, mm. meaning what? Yes. <laughs> we, can, we can allude to them yeah. being the fixers. They want to fix um, uh, the deputy president politically, mm. William yeah. Bruto polit politically. Yeah. But mm. if they're referring to the notion of fixing him politically through the Political Parties Act 2011, yes. yeah. I think they're very mistaken and deluded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Constitution clearly tells us how, mm -hmm. why, yeah. and when the deputy president mm -hmm. can be removed. Yes. Being partyless is not one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> the other way, or perhaps the more plausible way mm. um, they are intending to fix Ruto, yeah. is through um, instituting <laughs> a constitutional <laughs> change without a referendum, yes. uh -huh. which um, I think when it comes to expanding the executive, executive. it's possible to yeah. do it through um, parliamentary initiative. Yes. We've been saying that the lockdown or the curfew presents an opportunity for greater scheming because it gives them two things. It gives them time mm -hmm. yeah. and it gives them a smoke screen. It yes. gives them secrecy. So Tuje, last week you're telling us that uh, All bad 701... Things, yeah. And on the dot. <laughs> on the dot. That's <laughs> when scheming begins. That's, when, that's when scheming begins. Y mm -hmm. You know, you, you know uh, DM, I <laughs> completely agree with you. But I also want to say this to, to, to uh, William Bruto and Co. I'm, I'm not advising them, but I, 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 I want to talk about them. Uh, let me not advise them. Mm. You see, there is um, a, a Swahili saying, the Swahili have a saying, they say, Huwezi shindana nandovu kuenda hajakubwa. Yeah, and if you want to know the translation in English, you can check it out on Google. Anyway, there are two fellows. Uh, there's one called Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, the mm. lead, and then there's Kenneth Matiba. Two people who are far popular than William Ruto was. All right, mm -hmm. and even in 1969 election, uh, Jaramogi took half of parliament away, and Jomo Kenyatta actually called for a little general election, where I think uh, Jaramogi went to a party called is it PPU or something mm, of that PPU. nature. And uh, that's how he was actually kicked out of <coughs> government. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, the only man who overcame the system was one man called uh, Moai Kibaki. Mm. And the only way he overcame the system is actually pretending that he actually never really wanted the presidency. And he saw his competitors, his contemporaries, uh, contemporaries Rela Odinga, uh, George Saitoti, mm -hmm. not as competition. He saw them as a stepping stone to the president. Mm -hmm. That was my point here. I think William Ruto is trying so hard. He's coming out <laughs> with his chest out there and he really wants to compete against the system. Yeah. The system is this big elephant that you cannot compete pit in going to the toilet mm. and uh, and I think uh, the, the lesson he will learn from this if he continues taking the system on will be a very hard lesson yeah mm. and, and I think if anything lesson. what um, is going on right now mm. is the perfect opportunity to not waste a crisis yes and I think that right now even just looking globally there's mm. this trend of a consolidation of power yes. no leader is wasting this opportunity yeah. in Israel for example the Prime Minister Net Netanyahu yeah. he authorized surveillance technology which is normally reserved for the use against terrorists, terrorists. Yeah. Yes. So he had an emergency decree in 
in order to find ways to track and trace people who may have corona. Uh, absolutely. Mm. Trump the other day said yeah. at a press conference that his power is absolute. Yes. Which is, you know, <laughs> very incorrect. And I think the press there had a field day with that. He and sounded, also, he yeah. sounded like Museveni, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> if you say yeah. so. <laughs> and then even looking at like Turkey. Yeah. Um, what's that guy's name? Er, 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 Erdogan. Yes, exactly. He's yeah. just consolidated his power to make it more absolute and more broad. So yeah. I think mm. across the world we're seeing that leaders yeah. are using whatever their version of a curfew looks like. Precisely. To mm. scheme and be a little bit um, naughty. I'm saying, mm. look, look, yeah, you have the entire political landscape of this country against one man. Mm. For, for there's only one thing that probably will surpass the threshold of uh, of, of of going through, uh, you know, surpassing the system, mm. and that's probably if he does civil unrest. But even then, he, he it will still be checked. Yeah. Literally, he has no way. So what you're saying uh, to him? Yeah. Is that for self-preservation? He yeah. should do like Kibaki yes. and lay low like an envelope. Yes, mm. pret yeah, pretend like you don't want this thing. You but can even remember, come out say, Atami remember what happened when Kibaki did that? Is he had to wait a really long time to become president? He but became mm. president as an old man. Is that, are you are you then suggesting that? Uh, William Ruto should not run a marathon, uh, uh, a, 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 short a, a short race, but a marathon, a marathon. not a sprint. You're yeah, right, yes. That's to him, I'm sure that there's ways you can explain that better, likening this to romance, maybe, oh, oh, oh. and dating. <laughs> right? uh, uh, if you uh, seem a bit too uh, desperate for uh, the object of your affection, they it may. They can say it more. They can say it for me later. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, we do have a three part criteria that we use to analyze the headlines for you. We ask Is the headline topical or speculative? Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? And finally, is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? I'd like to point out mm -hmm. that the standards headline today is both uh, repetitive mm -hmm. and not thoughtful because we have seen it before, haven't yes. we? Uh, yeah, yeah, some um, iteration of it. Before. Yeah, abso yeah. absolutely. A and of course it's highly uh, speculative because they're not um, reporting anything concrete. Yes. What do we have on the Daily Nation? In the Daily Nation, the headline, Reckless Youth Fuel Spread of COVID-19. <laughs> so I think over the weekend we've seen some of the ridiculous antics that were going on around Nairobi. There was an ambulance that was used to ferry drunk people around the city uh, we have weekend parties that are happening and they're saying that carefree teens and young adults are emerging as one of the weakest links in this fight against corona and I could not agree more mm -hmm. I think that part of this problem stems from um, this background of acceptance that started from the beginning that young people if you were to catch corona you'd probably survive and make it through it you're invincible you're invincible so I think that has gotten into the brains of some very you know young stupid people who then think that that is a reason to defy government orders and to them I say if you want to get corona go ahead and do it. You know, you are an adult, feel free to do that. But just also bear in mind that this is a respiratory disease. So you may get corona, you may make it through it, but then you're going to be left with long-term issues that are irreversible. Mm. Yeah. So, But, but yeah. Uh, also, I, I also think the, the uh, as much as you're right too, Jay, there's also this. The curfew is not in effect from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you go around the markets of this Nairobi of ours, you find fellows in mm -hmm. Gedorai, mm. in Mudurwa, mm. in every other space, together cramped up. Are we saying that it's only the youth who pass this thing at night, and during the day corona doesn't pass because traders are actually exercising isolation mm. and social distance? Absolutely not. I think there still has to be measures. For, for goodness sake, how many hours from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m.? How many, how many hours are those? Probably, what, 12 hours? Mm -hmm. But I think what we should say also is that the measures that have already been put in place to reduce the chances of viral spreads Correct. should be adhered to. Correct. Yeah, I think it's one Correct. thing to say that you're spreading the virus during legal times. Yes. And during illegal times, there's a reason that we have a curfew. Yeah. If anything, these young people who are not respecting government orders mm -hmm. may be the reason why the government decides to have a total lockdown. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that, that's it's completely ridiculous. So <sighs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, good headline, though. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely a good headline. Yes. The star. What's the, the star, star saying? St uh, stories of brave medics keeping COVID-19 at bay. And this mm. is, it's a tribute to frontline medical, uh, medical staff that are, have actually taken their time a way off to, to fight this disease. But, uh, and I really want to congratulate them. Anyone yeah. who's fighting, who's at the front line of yeah. this, taking time off to fight this disease, we fantastic. Them. But the story that I loved, guys, is um, of a man called Njoroge. Now, this Njoroge man, he's a Nakuru based uh, sign language instructor and he's come up with videos to explain to, 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 to people who don't. Uh, who are deaf. Who are deaf. Mm. Uh, to explain to them what corona is. 
Uh, that's really good. Uh, that, that's really good. But the reason this happened was because Jiroge witnessed something that happened uh, after curfew. And he, <laughs> he saw a lot of deaf people arrested because they did not know what was happening. Can you imagine? Y you know, they did not know. Uh, there was nobody to tell them. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, it, it tells you largely how we are, we are tone deaf a lot on, on, a, on a lot of these matters because we have mm. people in society that are not able to communicate in other ways because uh, they, are, they are impaired. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I particularly applaud the the staff for telling yeah. us that yes, the medics are mm. people on the front line, but there's also there's other others. people Correct. that are sacrificing their time and their health yeah. Yeah. in order to, to yeah. fight this coronavirus pandemic. Mm. I for that reason, yeah. I'd suggest that we make the star our winning headline. It is uh, topical. Yes, absolutely. It is groundbreaking for giving us new information. Yeah. And it's extremely thoughtful. Absolutely. We need wow. to celebrate these people in society. In society. Okay. The star gives us our winning headline. Absolutely. Mm. On to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. And just like the headlines, we have a three-part criteria that we use to break them down for you. We ask, is the cartoon humorous or dry? Is it satirical or pessimistic? And finally, is it effective or just plain lazy? Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, the, the Daily Nation, you have Iga. And uh, that is a caricature of William Ruto inside the Jubilee Isolation Center. And uh, the, at the door, they have, uh, uh, it's been labeled Tuko Pamoja. But Sneaky Guy has actually ungathered her two copper moja. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you have uh, fellows Locking barricading, in. yes, with the planks of wood. And there's a guy in an orange uh, shirt there, mm. in a mask. And Who looks suspiciously of, like Raila Odinga. <laughs> looks like Raila Odinga. Uh, given know. his hat and his, his yes. shirt. And uh, look. And he's not assisting him. I think he's going to be isolated. And I, do, I would not be surprised if uh, they try. he tries to go to the office and they actually block him from going. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, he, uh, there's something to the effect that he says that he will be going to Jubilee Center every single, once a week, mm. uh, to sit there and oversee operations. Should he not be working he from home? He should be working from home. That, that would be <laughs> ill-advised in this uh, <laughs> COVID time. I thought this was a great cartoon. If anything, mm. what it reminded me of, the adding the ha for Hatuko Pamoja, yeah. it reminded it reminded me of Animal Farm, yeah. how as the story goes on, the animals have this initial list of rules right. that over time begin to change. Yes. And the way that Napoleon was yeah. changing these rules was not by altering them completely, mm. but by adding words, subtly. Yeah, subtly, adding words to either end of the rule so that it, you know you yeah. couldn't tell what had been changed. Yes. And the reason he did that is because he couldn't have the rules he had, he had created yeah. to then overrule and come in in the way of his power. Yes. So he, change, he changes them slowly so that he erodes the original meaning of them. I thought yeah. it was a, yeah, a great cartoon. Absolutely. I like the, yeah, I also like the cartoon because it's also making a play. It's a politics, yeah. it's, a poli it's a political mm. commentary, but it's also making Using a play corona. on the corona yes. epidemic. The star. The star, you have uh, Ozone, and uh, Ozone has, uh, has a caricature of John Pombe Magufuli. And uh, that's the, actually the padlock. There is a map of uh, Tanzania, mm -hmm. and uh, Kimagufuli is that uh, that circle, semicircle thing that actually locks. Uh, the, oh. the kifuli. You mean the lock itself? Uh, the lock mm. itself, the, the, the silver thing that goes mm. into the lock. And the caption there is the irony of Magufuli refusing to lock down during this COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. You know, something shocked me. A local TV station has been running apologies, apologizing to, to John Pombe Magufuli for actually saying that what's going to happen in Tanzania after COVID is going to be shocking. Well, look, I think they registered, what, 94 cases yeah. uh, recently. And uh, Magufuli has refused to lock it up. Yeah. In fact, he said, fellow Kenyans, mm. due to the pandemic, I urge you to use three days from fellow April Tanzanians. 17th. Oh, sorry, Tanzanians, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you would never. Yeah. To yeah. use these three days from April 17th to April 19th to pray for God's protection. Mm. I don't know when this notion of God... <sighs> let me not even... You no, know, let me tell you. Let you see, something is happening within East Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a reason why... Uh, uh, Museveni is acting the way he's acting. Uh -huh. It's because I'm sure he knows there's an election in December. Magufuli is also going into a re-election. Yeah. If he wants to have a populist uh, agenda and win the election, he will have something populist to say. I think he's just doing what a rational political uh, animal is going to do. However unpopular that view may, mm. may seem, this uh, side of the Sahara, I think he's just uh, playing politics. I yeah. think he's actually being quite irrational because if he is not decisive mm -hmm. and does not protect his populace from corona and there is a disaster thereafter, mm -hmm. nobody's voting for exactly. him. Maybe that's a low of voter turnout. Mm -hmm. But just from looking at the cartoon, I'll say just quite honestly, it's very lazy. Mm -hmm. We've seen this uh, motif he's used of the padlock 
Yes. You know, mm. Corona locking us in, locking us out. I think yeah. it's it's very lazy. But I, you know, they call it magufuli in Kiswahili is a t is, is, is connotation of lock. Magufuli, mm. magufuli. Mm. So are we saying that uh, for the third time, Iga is giving us a winning cartoon? Is it by default, or is it actually a good depiction? I Quarantine is making us crazy. Hey, I'm starting to like Iga, although he draws like he's doing standard for cartoons. Oh my gosh. Iga gives us the winning cartoons. What is our final thought? <laughs> and now. <laughs> Our final thought, it is inspired by a book entitled Start With Why, How Great Leaders Inspire Everyone to Take Action by mm. Simon Sinek. Yes. Mm. So this book is actually over 10 years old. I believe that there's a 10-year um, anniversary edition that will be coming out soon. Yeah. Mm. And so this week we wanted to just go through some of our fifth estate favorites, some of our classics, and mm. see how we can apply them to what is going on right now. Mm. So every leader and company mm. knows the what what makes them wake up every day yes yeah. they can describe their products their industry their competitors and some companies even know how they mm. do what they do yes yeah. what their unique differentiator is their value proposition and their core values mm. but very few companies and leaders actually know or are able to articulate the why mm. why they do what they do their purpose their cause their belief mm. and the why is their reason for being yes and the why is actually at the core why anybody should care about what you're doing mm. yeah. so in his book start with why mm. Simon Sinek explains why this approach works yeah. and how every aspiring leader or existing leader can incorporate it into their leadership mm. uh, the sentence that summarizes this book the best yeah. I would say is people don't buy what you do yes mm. they buy why you do it so yeah. he uses a very simple framework to illustrate this approach to leadership and he calls it the golden circle mm. So at the center of the golden circle is the why. Yes. And then the next circle is the how. Mm. And then finally, the outermost circle is the what. Yes. Mm -hmm. And since the what is the easiest to know and to articulate, mm. most leaders start with that. What do we do? We sell sugar. Mm. And sometimes they'll discuss the how. Mm. We get the sugar cane and we grind it down to sugar granules. Yeah. But they rarely talk about the, the why. why. Yeah. And the, with respect to the golden circle, they go from the outside and mm. then they make their way in. Mm. Right. But what Sinek advocates for instead is that we should invert the order yeah. mm. he says that we should go from the inside out with in regard to the golden circle yeah. mm. start with why discuss the how and then finally end with the what mm. so he says that starting with the why gives your followers a way to identify with you mm. on a personal and also on an emotional level yeah. Yeah. and if your why mm. also matches their why yeah. then they'll be willing to stand with you through thick and thick yeah. but without a clear why people are not able to know what to do and they mm. end up defaulting to this what yeah. And then you're always caught in a struggle to differentiate yourself between other people who also have their own what's. Yeah. Mm. So he says to build trust with your followers and with your customers, you need authenticity. Mm. And he says why, how and what they mm. all need to be in harmony, but mm. starting with your why. Mm. And so he says that you need to have a clarity of a why, yeah. Yeah. a discipline of a how and a consistency of a what. Yes. Mm. So the clarity of the why, he says you need a clear and simple articulation of purpose. Mm. I won't go into that much because I know 2M will cover that. Mm. But I think right now with the Ministry of Health, for example, mm. their hashtag Komesha Corona, yeah. I think it's perfect. Yeah. It's simple, it's clear yeah. and it articulates the purpose for which Kenyans need to be directing their energy. Correct. The discipline of the how, mm. you need to um, discipline the act in the ways to get people to support your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And he says the discipline of the how can be even more difficult than the why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's the discipline to never veer from your cause. Yeah. To hold yourself accountable to how you do things that is the hardest part. Yeah. And lastly, the consistency of the what. Yes. Mm. The what is everything that you produce, your yeah. messaging, your products, your ideas. Yeah. And it's critically important that the what you produce mm. is consistent with the how, but mm. more importantly with the why. Yes. Mm. And it's at that what level, at the final stage, mm. that authenticity authenticity and trust eventually develop and they happen. Yeah. So mm. I think that's a very clear like three stage way to have leaders focus on the yeah. why, to get yeah. people focusing and following them. Absolutely. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Simon Sinek tells us that mm. if you take a cross-section of the human brain, mm. Mm. you will see three areas. Yeah. On the outside is the most recently evolved part. Yes. It's called the neocortex. Mm -hmm. yes. And this is responsible for rational thought mm. and language. Yes. The two middle sections make up the limbic brain. Yes. Mm. These are responsible for feelings mm. Mm. like loyalty and trust, yes. as well as decision making. Yeah. So the limbic, uh, the limbic brain mm. lacks the capacity for language. Yeah. And that's why, 2M, it's, d <laughs> it's difficult to describe, for instance, why you love someone. <laughs> so as a company or a business person, 
you will fail to connect with your potential customers or with whatever audience you want to reach if you only appeal to the neo cortex, mm. yeah. the, the, the rational thought and language part of the brain. Yeah. Mm. If you're selling a TV and you explain the price, the specifications and mm. the features, mm. you are appealing to the neocortex. Mm. Yes. But mm. this part of the brain has the ability to process complex information but ironically yes it is not what leads us to make decisions <laughs> it is yes. actually the limbic brain that does that yes. so for years companies spent a lot of their resources and their advertising and commercials mm. speaking to the neocortex for example yeah. um detergent companies yeah. They try to convince people that it is their product that makes your whites whiter mm. and your brights brighter. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then anthropological studies later on uh, showed that yeah. people do not, after doing their laundry, they don't hold it up to the light to see how white it is and if it was whiter than before. Yeah. They um, are more responsive to the smell of the laundry. Mm. So when they smell it, it's the, they get the feeling that it's clean. Yeah. It's the limbic brain telling them that this feels clean, clean, but it's not the neocortex telling them that yeah. this is yeah. the objective level of cleanliness that we were going to attain. <laughs> yes. yeah. So that, that that is not what um, works. Yes. So people were working on a false assumption. Yeah. I was reading this and I was thinking, yeah. what do you think as Kenyans, which part of our brain do we use to vote? <laughs> I would say the limbic brain. Yeah. And, and, and that is why we are attracted Two politicians two who look like leaders of acrobatic troops, yeah, like, like uh, two M. Sonko, <laughs> <laughs> and not the Jimna Mbarus and Ole Kiapis. Yeah. Do you agree to him? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but b before, before I answer that question, let yeah. me tell you the origins of why and mm -hmm. where, why, where why comes from. Mm -hmm. and, and no, say, he says, why does not come from looking uh, ahead at what you'd want to achieve in life, for example? Why does not come from undertaking huge market research? Yeah. Why comes Why comes from this? He says, why is a process of discovery, oh. not of invention? And uh, I took this as a spontaneous order. Mm. And the moment I read these guys, I, I just, it reminded me so much of uh, how children are today. You see, and, and it's because of parents. You see, Parents really tell their children, I want you to get this in school. I want you to become so and so. Mm. Now, let's assume a kid has what, uh, some talent what, in music, for example, mm. in singing of, of, of music or probably football or sport. Mm. Mm. The kid has probably found their purpose in life, but yet they are forced to go uh, through a path that has already been decided for them. Mm. All right. Now, second thing I took from this is something he calls the new competition. And he says, when you compete against everybody else, nobody wants to help you. But when you compete against yourself, everybody wants to help you. And that's because many a times as human beings, we see uh, uh, our colleagues, our friends as competition. You will really mm. want to get ahead of life in your social class. You want to be the one with the best car or the, with the best house. But in essence, I, he says you should be competing against yourself. And how, do, uh, and how much I really agree with this. Mm. And I really want to read something uh, that he says uh, there, uh, Samuel Senek. He says, those who forget why they were founded or made show up to the race every day to outdo someone else instead of outdoing themselves. Mm. And I also want to read something from uh, uh, someone I really like. It's called Jay-Z. Mm, and he you. says, Jay-Z says, when I look in the mirror, I see my only opponent. Nice. <laughs> Did you, are you going to answer the question about the limbic brain? No. And <laughs> politics? No. Thank you for joining us. We had our winning headline today from The Star and our winning cartoon from Iga of the Daily Nation. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on your TV screens. We're on Star Times, GoTV and Pang Free to Air. Have a good evening and see you tomorrow.